Detective Stories, a fantasy musical, a drama about finding your dreams, a complicated investigation and more in today's episode. Hello everyone and welcome to my Shadow Tavern. In this issue, I have 10 popular Netflix movies released in the first week of this year. Make yourselves comfortable and have a great time watching. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, is the sequel to the intriguing detective film Knives Out, which classically begins by introducing the characters through an invitation to a murder investigation game. The action takes place on a remote Greek island, where tech billionaire Miles Braun is throwing a party for his friends. But after one of the guests dies, everyone else becomes a suspect, and it just so happens that master detective Benoit Blanc is here to help solve the mystery. The plot of the film is full of twists and turns, simple puzzles and laughs, and Benoit Blanc will have to think outside the box, as the answer to the mystery may be hidden in plain sight. The events of the second film develop slowly, and the first half serves to introduce the characters, but the middle of the film, when Johnson begins to put the characters into their place in the story, is exciting. The second film is very different from the first, and if you want to enjoy the story to its fullest, it's better to forget about the first film altogether and take Glass Onion as a standalone work. Just let the mystery unfold on its own, layer by layer. The Pale Blue Eye is a gothic thriller based on the novel by Louis Bayard, written and directed by Scott Cooper. The film takes viewers to Civil War America, where Detective Lander arrives at the prestigious West Point Military Academy to investigate the death of a cadet whose heart has been removed. With suicide ruled out, the High Command must quietly investigate this terrible threat. With his questions and inquiries, Gus engages a young cadet who is eager to help. Edgar Allan Poe, who is never one to give up his drink and his volumes of poetry, becomes his willing assistant. Working together, Gus Landor and Edgar Allan Poe encounter an unknown evil that eludes their best efforts to uncover. The film is able to hold the audience's interest thanks to its cast of top actors, and the work of composer Howard Shore gives it a special feel. The film is also notable for its lack of chromakey madness and fake sets. Everything looks real, which is one of the reasons why this dark story is so gripping. Roald Dahl's Matilda the Musical is a fantasy musical about an unlikely child with superpowers who struggles with her problems at Crunch Hall Primary School. Run by the cruel Miss Trunchbull, Matilda begins to use her powers to get back at everyone who has mistreated her. But when she finds a kindred spirit in the kind Miss Honey, Matilda sets out to right not only her own wrongs, but those of everyone around her. The film is an adaptation of the musical Matilda, with music and lyrics by Tim Minchin, based on the classic book by Roald Dahl. The songs in the film are brilliantly sung and the production and cinematography look amazing. What can I say? Musicals on Netflix are really good. The casting is also excellent. Emma Thompson has to be singled out for her stunning portrayal of Miss Trenchbull. The film is suitable for all ages and can be enjoyed by the whole family. It's entertaining and funny, and at times the story is very touching. White Noise is an adaptation of Don DeLillo's novel by acclaimed director Noah Baumbach, who also wrote the screenplay. The film tells the story of Professor Jack Gladney, his sarcastic wife Babette, and their children as they face an apocalyptic event, a toxic chemical release. The family must escape the mass hysteria that this event will cause. In their quest to survive and escape danger, they face the chaos of death and destruction, but the hardest part will prove to be coping with routine. White Noise is an apocalyptic black comedy that could easily be described as unconventional and dark, with a sharp critique of 1980s American consumer and science. The film is a satire of the average American family dealing with the mundane problems of death, life and love. The film has a brilliant cast of excellent actors. On the other hand, the plot is extremely twisted, the dialogue is overly stylized and the overall atmosphere is intriguing but off-putting. White Noise is one of the strangest films released by Netflix so far this year. It is a film that is sure to divide audiences, which is why it has a huge number of viewing hours and diametrically opposed reviews. The Invitation. The movie The Invitation has an exciting plot, great locations and unexpected characters, and well-done horror elements including jump scares. However, the ending of the movie is not as clever as the director expected. In addition, the plot drags, making the movie a bit too slow, and some scenes do not help the plot and even distract from the main action. The story of the movie is about a New York ceramist who receives a bag of free DNA tests and discovers that she has English relatives with good wealth. Her cousin pays for her to travel to England to attend a family reunion in Whitby. At the event, however, the people hired to run the wedding begin to disappear. As the story progresses, it becomes clearer who is attacking, and the horror scenes become more overt, however. And this is not a spoiler because everything is clear from the trailer. For a vampire movie there is not enough blood on screen. Regards to a PG-13 limitations. In addition there are many lines in the actor's dialogue that do not contribute to the plot and distract from the main action. The movie is watchable, but not really strong. It is a mixture of modern gothic horror and a classic vampire movie set in England. 
The Kings of the World is a movie about five homeless kids from Medellin, Colombia, who dream of having their own place where they can be free and safe. They have title deeds to a piece of land that Ra inherited, and they decide to go on a journey to get it. Along the way they encounter many obstacles, such as good and evil, solidarity and greed, love and hate. They also encounter violence in the land during their journey. Despite the challenges, they keep going because this is their adventure of a lifetime. They never stop on their way to their dream, to the piece of land where they can finally be free. Kings of the World is a movie about the importance of having roots and a home. It is a movie about the the importance of fighting for your freedom and your place in life. All in all it is a wonderful movie that shows us that nothing is more important than hope and dreams. Troll is a fantasy action film produced by Netflix and directed by Norwegian director Roar Alfa. The movie's plot is based on elements of Norwegian folklore and takes place in the Dover Mountains in central Norway, where an unstoppable and colossal troll awakens, intent on destroying on his unknown ancient mission. Don't expect depth novelty or innovation from this movie, but it can be an intriguing way to spend a rainy day. The movie is well made, with excellent cinematography and stunning visual effects. The animators manage to create a giant troll without taking it to the point of absurdity. The movie doesn't take itself too seriously and manages to do so without resorting to the sarcastic jokes so beloved of Hollywood monster and superhero movies. Troll is a cross between King Kong and Godzilla. The movie is an effective and family-friendly monster movie with a Scandinavian background. God's Crooked Lines is a mysterious and fascinating film about private investigator Alice Good, who pretends to be mentally ill in order to gain access to a psychiatric hospital to investigate the death of her client's son. The plot develops along two lines, only one of which is the beginning of Alice's investigation. Although the pace of the film can be slow in the beginning, the dialogues are tense and you really have to pay attention to the details to understand what is going on. The film fully exhibits the concept of mystery, and it is good and engaging, but once again, the slow pace and dragging shots. Overall it is a good mystery that keeps the viewer in suspense until the very end. Although it is a typical asylum mystery movie that questions the sanity of the main character, it still offers a gripping and intriguing plot that makes the viewer wonder who is who. The Big Four an unhappy detective investigating her father's death follows his trail to a tropical island where she meets four former hitmen. The girl is pursued by a rival gang that is implicated in the death of her father, who is the mentor of the four. And just like that, the characters unite and try to get to the truth. The Big Four is a wild and absurd action that strikes a surprising balance between comic moments, quality acting and a coherent ending. The plot is just an excuse to get the characters together and throw them into a whirlwind of crazy choreography, explosions and special effects. And still the movie is really enjoyable and entertaining as a light popcorn and flick. The cast in this movie is excellent and fun to watch, and their interactions are well thought out and funny. The humor in the movie works well, with enough laughs for the entire duration of the movie. The fights are very well done and entertaining, especially the hilarious slapstick fight that is reminiscent of a bloody Jackie Chan fight scene. Overall The Big Four is a good action movie with solid humor, great cinematography, and quality acting. This movie is good for those who are looking for a light and entertaining action movie to watch. Seven Women and a Murder is a classic detective investigation with great visual effects, excellent casting and acting. Six women find their loved ones murdered and find themselves locked in a house with no way to contact the police or escape. Suddenly a seventh mystery woman appears, and secrets begin to unfold. The film is set in Italy of earlier times, and the cinematography, costumes, and sets match it. The film presents an Italian version of the classic plot. Although all of the characters are stereotypes, this may have been done intentionally. The patriarch in the film has no lines, and every woman is an exaggerated stereotype and usually the dialogues sound unrealistic. Despite this, the excellent work of the set and costume designers was done, and is the main redeeming factor of the film. Overall Seven Women and a Murder is an interesting detective film with beautiful visuals, though with some flaws in the script. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share this video with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and click the buttons below the player. And see you in the next issue. Bye.